The church that was destroyed by fire was insured for half a million dollars. According to Etienne Gaboury, it would have cost over six million dollars simply to enclose the space. In other words, put a, put a floor back in it, put a roof on it, interior, you know, interior walls inside the stone. That was six million bucks. So after a lot of community discussion and toing and froing, the uh, budget was set, according to Etienne Gaboury, at $635,000. And his mandate, he told me once, was fairly simple. Build it on a square plan, and it needs to accommodate a thousand people. After that, he said he had carte blanche to do whatever he wanted. So essentially, it was his decision to build the new church within the ruins of the old one. And that brings us to the facility we have today, which was open for worship in 1972. It's a very modern church, even like, you know, getting on 40 years, you know, whatever later, it's still an impressive modern church. But the beauty of this is that it's built within the ruins of the old one. So you can still sort of appreciate the grandeur of the old cathedral on this site. the interior of the walls, you'll see these sort of large buttresses, these concrete buttresses, and they are designed that it is very clear they are not part of the original fabric of the historic structure. So somebody comes in, looks at these and says, okay, these were not there when this was a church and what have you. And it's the same with the, uh, you know, with the bells. You know, the, the bells are supported in this scaffolding uh, which obviously has no relationship to the former bell towers or anything like this, but it's very clear that that was not where the bells were originally. The other interesting thing that Gaboury did in sort of unifying the two, the old structure and the new structure, is that the roof of the new structure was originally covered with oxidizing steel. It's designed to rust. Uh, that's now been recently replaced with copper, but the look is still pretty much the same as the copper oxidizes. And what Gaboury wanted to recapture was the oxidized metal girders and the steel that he found when he first walked into the ruins of the old church, you know, before beginning construction. So the idea is there's this wonderful marriage of the, the old, or sort of a, a remembering of the disaster, and then you come into this new wider church, this new modern church, which is kind of neat in its own right.
Etienne's vision, from my understanding, is that he wanted this space inside the new church to be sort of very sort of peaceful, calming, at ease. So the idea of the use of the natural, the natural wood in the, uh, you know, in the ceiling and so on and so forth. And even the walls, I mean, they are, they're basically stuccoed walls and so on and so forth, but they don't have that same sort of, I guess you might call the oppression of, you know, of cold stone or, or, or so on. And the other one is the use of natural light. There is a lot of light coming in through these stained glass windows. So it's a very sort of calm space. Uh, you don't, it, it doesn't have the same intimidation, shall we say, that sort of the old traditional cathedrals tend to have. Etienne Gaboury, you know, his architecture speaks for itself and so on, but he's also something of an artist. And in the case of the cathedral, you know, several years after this cathedral was, was opened and finished, he got the contract to do the stained glass windows, which represent the ways of the cross, or the stations of the, uh, you know, uh, uh, of the ways of the cross. And it's very modern. I mean, this is modern art. It's, it's, it's symbolic. And then the punchline to the stations of the cross is the window that you do not see. Above the altar is a skylight, which you can't see from the, from the pews. But when the afternoon sun shines through that skylight, you have a representation of the risen Christ projected against the wall. But that's only visible mid to late afternoons, depending on the time of year and, and so on. Also, the statuary in here is quite limited, but the two pieces they do have that are really striking is the representation of the risen Christ, um, which, is, uh, which is done by Real Berard. And beside him, there's a cross, but it, it's more like a plus symbol. It's, it's not the traditional cross. So what you have is you have this rather large representation of the risen Christ, but the cross is actually quite small. So it represents his triumph over death, over the cross. The beauty of this site is not only do you have like the church structure, again, the new church with all it has to offer, and then of course the imposing ruins. I mean, you look at this from the forks, from you know, vantage points, and I mean, they're just, they're there. You can get a sense of how huge that original basilica was. Um, when you look through, you know, this large circle in the front of the sod, which was the large stained glass window, you know, that's, the window's gone, but you can still appreciate the size of this. The cemetery itself has its attractions as well. I mean, you know, primarily uh, the who's who of the historic St. Boniface and Métis community are buried in that cemetery. At the front of the cemetery, there's also a statue of the Blessed Mother, which was uh, installed shortly after the 1950 flood. So you have all sorts of things going on in the cemetery that, uh, you know, you know, if you were to do a complete tour and, and visit, you could spend hours. Here at the cathedral itself, there's not a lot of interpretive material. Um, the um, the columbarium that's outside, you'll find images of the various churches with a brief history. So that, that's useful. But at the St. Boniface Museum, we have a fairly impressive display, again, with panels outlining the history, the architecture, and the bishops involved with each of the successor churches and cathedrals on the site. So people who come to this site, if they go to the museum afterwards, they'll learn a lot more particularly useful would be to visit the museum first, have a look at these displays and so on, and then when you come to this site, you have a much greater appreciation of what's going on here. <laughs>